Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94 here. Back with another reaction video today. We finna react to CJ the Champ, the homie CJ the Champ. I ain't seen or heard from this man in some time now, but he has come back with some heat, man. Uh, a 40 a forty minute video, by the way. 40 fucking minute video. Do Flamingo, the Heavenly Demon. Oh, if this is gonna be forty minutes long, man, this should be so. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a doozy right here. So yeah, man. Without further ado, man, let's get right into it. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time for the most anticipated yet riskiest trial of all time. Yeah, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. I'm playing press your luck with this one. But it, we do this for the people. Go, 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 go <laughs> get it started. Come and get at a whopping ten feet tall. God damn. And with so many crimes committed, I can't even name them all right now. The heavenly demon, Don Quixote do Flamingo. So y'all already know how this goes. The evidence is on deck, ready to be presented. But go ahead, grab some popcorn or something to snack on. Because without further ado, exhibit A. <laughs> Don Quixote do Flamingo, one of the seven warlords of the sea and the king of Dressrosa. His name is feared throughout all the seas, and his drip is unmatched. Oh, this way! But how did the heavenly demon become one of the biggest kingpins in the world? Well, we have to go back a good 33 years in the past. Now, do Flamingo was a celestial dragon. Now, if you don't know what a celestial dragon is, allow me to explain. These are the world nobles, aka the biggest dickheads in the fucking world. Ugh. Brother, ugh. And I mean, they ain't even hiding it. Look at them. They literally have dicks on their heads. They're dickheads. Look at that. This fucking alfalfa ass, jack jack ass shit on their head. Now, Saint Homing, Do Flamingo's father, decided one day, everybody, I have an announcement to make. I would like to go live with the peasants. <laughs> Blasphemy! Now, this is a very big deal because the Don Quixote family are world nobles living in the holy land of Marijua, basically motherfucking Beverly Hills. And Do Flamingo's dad decided, I want to go live with the regular niggas, because why not? And this is some of the stupidest shit you could possibly do because everybody hates celestial dragons because they enslave people. They're assholes. They don't even consider themselves human because they are the top of society. So the whole family ends up leaving and giving up their celestial dragon status. And obviously, Lil Delphi wasn't fing with it. Bro was already complaining. Lil nigga was like, Daddy, where are the slaves and why do I have on this peasant clothing? Oh, calm down, son. We're gonna be living a simple, peaceful life now. So bullshit. Now, it's very clear that Do Flamingo's dad doesn't have an ounce of evil in his body, like the other celestial dragons. He's a simple man, but an ignorant one, and he was about to get hit with a reality check. So the next day, him and Dofi walk into town. So his dad walks up to the vendor and says, I want to buy some apples. So the vendor's like, oh, tally home, brother. You must be new here. But this dumb ass nigga ends up saying, oh, yes, me and my family are from Marijua. You what? So everybody shook. They like, what the fuck? If you from Marijua, you a celestial dragon, ain't you? And this dumb ass nigga is like, oh, oh, no, no, no. We, we used to be Celestials, but we're human now. And then it didn't help that Dolph Flamingo just started going off on everybody, calling everybody peasants and shit. So they was cooked. Because later that night, they burned down their damn house. They was trying to kill these niggas. They on some Salem witch trials type shit. Find the Celestials and burn them. So they end up running for their life for days because a dumbass daddy was so fucking ignorant thinking that a Celestial dragon could live with regular people. And this man Dolph Flamingo was shook. As a kid, this man went from the top of the world to the fucking gutter. Him and his brother got beat for trying to steal bread because they had no money while people just laughing at him look at this bad bitch and a nigga with a panda head i'd be damned if i see a nigga with a panda head laughing at me like look at little bro this is terrible wow and mama end up getting sick and she end up dying damn so at this point don't flamingo rightfully so hates his dad as he should this nigga's an idiot you broke you stink and now your wife's dead it can't get no worse right wrong the people end up finding them and i don't even know if i can say this word on youtube so i'm just gonna bleep it they them these people start going off on them i kid you not bro right here said hang that nigga now i got the rope right here and they oh just my go God. off on them because they are celestial dragons. They hate them. It don't matter if Doflamingo's dad is different. You're still a celestial dragon to them. The people who treat commoners like garbage. So at this point, this was the breaking point for Dofi. Everybody just stops and just looks at him. They could feel this little nigga's anger from down there. They both just started talking like a rabbit dog. And then it happened. The man unlocked his conqueror's hockey. And this little nigga knocked every single person out with his aura.
Now you see, here's the thing with this. I'm not counting this as a charge. This is an act of self-defense. He hung his ass, hung his daddy ass, and his brother. So even though this man broadcasted that he got murder on his mind, he getting let off the hook with this one. So after that life-altering incident, Dofi goes to this run-down ass shack and ends up meeting this nasty ass, snot-nosed, hunchback, fat motherfucker. Oh my God, I hate this nasty ass nigga treble. So this nasty SOB says, Hey, so I heard you knocked out all those people with your hockey. No, me and my boys are stuck late you if you pass my test so treble gives him a gun and the ito ito no me and this man doflamingo did not waste no time he had murder on his mind he went back to his dad and said fuck you old nigga and blew his brains out murdered his own father in cold blood right in front of his brother and this right here is a good old case of patricide murdering your own father so after Doflamingo murdered his father, he actually brought his head back to Marijuana to try to get his status back, but they said, hell not nah, leave, peasant. So he ends up going back to Triple, and him, Diamante, Pika, and Virgo said, hmm, let's glaze this little nigga to the ends of the earth. And from that day, the Don Quixote family was born, and they was not playing no games. These four niggas would do anything for Dofi. Take for example, one day, Triple finds Dofi beat up. So he asked him, oh my glorious king, what happened? Ah oh, man, some guys roughed me up. I wish they were dead. <laughs> okay. These dudes find the dudes that jumped him and trouble comes up to him and says you're the guys who roughed up dothy right <laughs> that little run we were just teasing him that's all <laughs> oh shit hey bro we was just teasing him i swear shut up they was not playing games with nobody. If Dofi wanted you dead, guess what? You're dying. If he wanted your turf, guess what? Get the packet. This man took racketeering to another level as a 10 year old at that. And this was the wildest one. Diamante finds bro and says, oh my glorious king, what happened to your knee? Ah oh, man, I just tripped on a crack in the road. Oh, and where's this crack exactly? And I kid you not, this nigga Diamante finds the crack in the road and says, fuck it. I might as well level the whole town. So that's what they did. They blew up the whole town. Oh and from my that God. day for the Don Quixote family was feared. Niggas cleared the streets when they saw Dofi walking. Hide your kids, hide your wife, ain't nobody safe. The Dofi trial. Exhibit A wrap up. Patricide, racketeering, mass destruction, multiple counts of murder. Exhibit B. Y'all righty, ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you Exhibit B, Joker. We now fast forward 30 years later, and at this point in time, Doflamingo is the most influential underworld broker in the game, and he is also one of the seven warlords of the sea. And before he became a warlord and they froze his bounty, this man had a whopping bounty of 340 million berries. Jesus now Christ. imagine if the nigga wasn't a warlord. God knows how high that shit would be. But anyways, we now focus our attention to Mock Town, and specifically Bellamy. Now, as we know, before this even happened, Bellamy fought Luffy and got absolutely embarrassed. One shot it to be precise it looks like bellamy and his crewmate who i ain't gonna lie i forgot his name i think his name is like sarquisa or sharkisha or some shit i don't know but it looks like they're fighting each other and having a falling out but that is not the case at all because you see this nigga dofi sitting in the corner patrolling them with his string string fruit and this man is pissed off for obvious reasons because this nigga bellamy is trash he got one shot by a human condom and it was under doflamingo's banner the bellamy pirates were under him so obviously that is a hit to his reputation so dofi said fuck it you useless piece of shit and controls old boy like a puppet and slices him. Had this man Bellamy begging for his life. And what makes this kind of sad? Let me give y'all a flashback real quick. Back when Bellamy was a straight young bull, bro used to look up to Doflamingo. He wanted to be just like him. I don't know why bro was a terrible influence. It must have been the drip of the ore or some shit. But Doflamingo was his inspiration. But when they first met, Doflamingo clearly stated, if you ever lose under my flag, my Jolly Roger, I'm gonna beat your ass and make you unemployed. And well, the rest is history. But of course, Bellamy's still begging like, B -b please, j -j 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 just give me one more chance, my glorious king. But Duffy looked at him like, Bellamy, how much you think my fit costs? Uh, 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 30,000? 56 million berries, broke ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so this man Dofi got up and walked away and said, My fit costs more than your whole bounty. And I have absolutely no use for broke ass niggas. And slices this nigga! Bro just assaulted his most notorious glazer while firing him at the same time. Well, ain't that a hell of a way to get fired on your day off? But we really don't even get to see a glimpse of how strong this dude is until the Summit War, aka the grand opening for the greatest donut shop of all time, Crispy Aces. So before the war even started, you already knew bro was on time. I mean, look at this bloodthirsty ass nigga, bro hitting the Uzi tongue. <laughs>
But the first victim of this man's bloodlust was none other than Lil Lors, big ugly ass boy. So Lil Lors is just stomping on niggas, trying to make his way to save El Donut. But this big boy ends up getting jumped in brutal fashion too. So it started off with Kuma, which I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I was about to roast the shit out this man, but I just caught up on the manga. And after reading that backstory, I, I don't want to roast you, bro. So even though you built like an egg with some damn chicken legs, you off the hook, my nigga. So anyways, <laughs> Kuma shocks the shit out this nigga, had this man or spazzing. And this man was so cooked, but he said, hell no, I'm at least taking out somebody with me. So he ends up aiming for Dofi, and bro just looked at it like, really nigga? So bro ends up destroying the whole wall, but Brody ain't hit shit. Cause you see this nigga flying thinking he's Cardi. <laughs> <laughs> in the air too. What's wrong, pussy? The donut man is right there. And you knew Ors was cooked because Duffy made this man see his backstory. That's how you know your screen time over. So Duffy ain't gonna amputate it, bro. Cut that big ass leg clean off. And he's just laughing his ass off and saying, This is what you get for being a dripless Neanderthal. And then Gecko Moria's hog back, bowling pin built ass. And with that, she, 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 monkey. And it was raps. Them boys murdered Lil Lors, but Doflamingo was not done racking up these murder charges. So later on, Viking Humpty Dumpty ends up pulling up and saying, Doflamingo, fuck you in that feathered ass coat, nigga. So bro runs at him and tries to swing at him, but he stops. And Dofi just started talking shit, saying, What's wrong, Water Buffalo? Are you too mesmerized from all my sauce? And y'all already know what he did. He hit bro with his strings. He wasn't moving an inch. So all these other dudes end up running up. And yeah, a massacre was about to ensue. Bro right here runs up. He gets his balls chopped off. And Dofi just started puppeteering this man and making him kill his own men. This was just but also despicable. You made this man kill his own man. That's fucked up, bro. And while bro is massacring these dudes, this man gives off one of the greatest speeches I've ever heard. And everything he said in this speech is 100% facts. Now, obviously, I can't play the audio, but I'm gonna text it out for us. We're gonna do a quick English project real quick. So here we go. Pirates are evil. The Marines are righteous? <laughs> these terms have always changed throughout the course of history. Kids who have never seen peace and kids who have never seen war have different values. <laughs> Those who stand at the top determine what's wrong and what's right. <laughs> this very place is a neutral ground. Justice will prevail you say? Of course it will. Whoever wins the war becomes justice. <laughs> This <laughs> even though he's pure evil, he is actually speaking legitimate facts and you can't deny it. So after this, I ain't even gonna lie to you, Duffy just basically had a drip off a crocodile for the rest of the war. So I'm just translate this whole conversation for you. Oh, hell no. Get aboard my nigga. I got a proposition for you. You got drip, I got drip. You gets money, I gets money. So what you say, tag team? Man, fuck you, you pink feather flamboyant feminine ass nigga. Oh no, nah, shut the fuck up with that fake ass gold claw. I know you got that shit from Timu. Fuck you, and fuck you too. You tobacco loving, chain smoking son of a bitch. <laughs> Now, most of this fight sadly happened off screen, but hey, only Oda know how long this sauce off went on for. So fast forward all the way to the end of the war and you just see explosions in the background. And the reason why is because Doflamingo was jumping to 60% body fat eggplant because he basically had an assassination order from somebody up high. But Moria somehow lived, I, I don't know how, but it don't matter, nigga, that's still attempted murder. Now. It's time to move three years later. And at this time, Doflamingo's criminal enterprise is thriving. This nigga is anime El Chapo. And I mean, this man did everything from arms dealing and gun running, two massive drug labs, one in Punk Hazard and one in Dress Rosa, producing smile fruits for Kaido and had none other than Caesar Clown cooking that shit up. And I kid you not, these smile fruits was fucking niggas up. For example, take a look at Wano. Smile fruits hit Wano like crack in the 80s. This man is solely responsible for supplying these niggas to cause a drug Drug epidemic. Look how this shit hit neighborhoods in Wano, bro. They thought these hoes was just regular apples. Hell nah, these hoes was laced and everybody was eating them, even the kids. And they lost all emotions except for smile and laughter. They basically ate Joker venom. Yeah, hell nah. The Don Quixote family needs to change their name to the Don Quixote cartel expeditiously. So now we end up catching up with Dofi at one of his Dofi parties. Because you know what they say? There ain't a party like a Dofi party. And he gets a call from Punk Hazard saying, Oh, your master, the Straw Hats, Law, and G5 is fucking with our product. So this man took extreme measures and basically said, Motherfucker, you think that's my problem? I got bitches here. Oh my God, don't be come in the water. <laughs> Hold on, ladies. The party's just getting started. Motherfucker, blow up the island. I'll send somebody to pick up Caesar's bitch ass later. Now, sadly, Doflamingo's plan to blow up the lab failed miserably because of <laughs> Caesar's dumbass. So this man was so pissed off, he said, fuck it, niggas can't get shit done. So I'ma do it myself. So this man web slinged all the way to Punk Hazard. So later on, while G5 basically has the island under control, this man Dofi flies in saucy as fuck and just hits a superhero landing. And everybody in G5 is stunned. They like, oh my God, that drip, the aura is Doflamingo. And look at this 10 foot nigga towering over these midgets. Nigga, fuck being a drug lord. Go to the league. And Dofi ain't waste no time. Bro said, The beat go off? Hey. Hey, 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 hey
This man knocked oh, out damn every toe? single soldier with Conqueror's Hockey. Didn't even lay a hand on him. Just hit him with the sauce. But he wasn't done. He ends up webbing up all the other Marines' guns and made them oh, all aim yeah. at each other. And this man elegantly made them all shoot each other while hitting this saucy-ass flip. Oh, my goodness. Bro just murdered I don't know how many people, but he did it in the sauciest way possible. So then this one Marine is begging for his life. He like, please, I have a family. <laughs> Nigga, fuck your family. They should be ashamed of your broke ass. I know you don't get no paper. I know your bitch be fucking other niggas behind your back. You fucking cock. So what got so bad? Smoker had to intervene. But my God, this man got washed. Look at his sorry. He can't even land a hit. This is why you're not making Admiral, buddy. Look at him. Bro tried to punch him in the dick. Duffy looked at him like, whoa, slow down there, you freaky fuck. And this is how you know this man Smoker is washed. This man already breathing heavy as hell, and they only been fighting for 30 seconds. But then some of Smoker's men end up coming and try to bail him out. But bro tried to be chivalrous and save him, but ends up getting met with razor sharp strings and ends up getting flung. And after Smoker got cooked, Duffy just got real disrespectful. He sat on bro, grabbed his face like your mom. I'm about to beat your ass and was about to kill him. But Smoker ended up getting the bail out of the century because Al Kiji pulled up and said, all right, big dog, we gonna have to stop. And you see, Doflamingo is a smart man because he knows he can't win this fight. You think he's gonna fight a formal admiral and get embarrassed? Hell nah. Bro said, I'll take my leave. I got bigger fish to fry. And that fish, of course, is law in the straw hats. And especially law because these niggas got generational beef. The, the Dofi Dofi trial. trial. Exhibit B wrap up. Assault and battery. Murder, mass murder, arms trafficking, drug manufacturing, possession, and trafficking. Exhibit C. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for Exhibit C, Corazon. So, there is a reason why Law has mad beef with Dofi, and it all started 16 years ago. Now, when Law first came to Doflamingo, he was very sick. He had white lead disease, and his whole family is dead because the world government decided to murder everybody in that town because they all had that disease. So they raccoon city that bitch. Now, Law didn't have that much time left to live, but Dofi kept him around and said, there's a chance that you might be able to live if you get this devil fruit called the op-op fruit because you'll be able to heal yourself. Also, the fruit's busted. So Law ended up sticking around with him, doing some piracy, robbing some banks, and of course, catching bodies. And Dofi's main objective was basically to groom Law to become his right-hand man. Now, here's where everything goes to shit. Corazon, aka Doflamingo's brother, Rosinante, basically told him, hey, little nigga, you got D in your name. And if Dofi figures out you got D in your name, he gonna kill your little ass. Because if you got the big D in your name, you are a mortal enemy of the Celestial Dragons. And also, Corazon is a narc. Hey, I'm a rat. I ain't no snitch. He is a undercover <laughs> marine trying to take down his evil brother. So you can kind of see what this is. These two are basically opposites and the what ifs of a tragic outcome. Doflamingo wants to burn the fucking world because fuck everybody. And Corazon wants to do good in the world and basically stop his brother because he's a crazy bastard. So Corazon ends up taking Law around for like six months, trying to find a cure for his disease and getting him away from Dofi. Now, while this was going on, Dofi called them and said, come back to the ship. We got a lead on the op-op fruit and we can cure Law's disease. Now, with this in mind, Corazon decided, let's just go steal it so we can cure your disease and go into hiding. So Corazon gets the information from the Navy to where the fruit actually is. So later on, they end up getting to the island and Corazon ends up stealing the fruit, but at the expense of getting shot the fuck up. So after bro got shot up, but somehow survived, he made Law eat the fruit. And after that, he told him, this is some important intel I need you to give to the Navy that's on this island right now. So while Law went to go search for a Marine to give the note to, he found one, but the wrong one. Cause the Marine he gave it to was Virgo, Dofi's undercover agent in the Marines. So Law brought Virgo all the way back to Corazon and Virgo was like, what the fuck, Corazon? Oh, you narc ass nigga. And Virgo ended up reading the intel and gets his face in. And Virgo did not hold back. He beat the shit out of Corazon. And then after that, he beat Law's ass. So then after they get their ass beat, Dofi arrives on the island. And this man is dripped out of his mind and pissed because his own brother was a rat. And Doflamingo knew something was off too because those six months that Corazon was gone, the Navy was off they ass. And every time Corazon was there, the Navy was there. So it was all over for his little bro. Dofi ends up setting up his birdcage over the island so nobody can leave. And he just went on a rampage until he found his brother, killing literally anybody and everybody that was in his way. So later on, when the family finally finds Corazon, they jump the hell out of this man, eat the rat piss out of him, and play baseball with his body. Hold on. And this was just horrible. This man Gladius went to his body and said, How dare you betray the family, you rat ass nigga. So after they jumped him, Doflamingo came up to him and said, Corazon, my baby brother, a fucking narc. <laughs> Fuck you, nigga. 
Cause on, you know how hard it is to kill your own flesh and blood again. And my God, it, it pains me to do it. But do me a favor, baby brother, and say hello to Pops for me. Damn. This man, Doflamingo, dumped about 10 bullets in this nigga and murdered his own little brother in cold blood. The, the Dofi Dofi trial. trial. Exhibit C wrap up. Piracy, grand larceny, murder, mass murder, fratricide. Exhibit B. Jesus All right, Christ. ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for Exhibit B, the usurpation of Dressrosa. Now, Doflamingo, as we know, is the king of Dressrosa, but how did he become king? Yeah, <laughs> you might need to sit back for this one. So, 10 years before the present, Dressrosa was a very peaceful nation that knew no types of war and had an honest king named King Riku. Now, the people loved King Riku. They'd glaze this man to the end of the earth, but sadly, this would change in a single night. So, on that tragic night, Doflamingo flew to the king's private quarters. So, he pulled up, woke this nigga up, and said, don't even try calling for help, or I will slit your fucking throat right now. So, Dofi basically explained to the king that this land, matter of fact, this whole country belongs to me, and I finally come back to take back what's rightfully mine. So, the thing is that the Don Quixote family used to rule over Dressrosa about a good 800 years ago, till they abandoned it and became celestial dragons, and now Dofi is back to claim what's his. Now, he gave the king a ultimatum. He basically told him, we can either A, I will take over this entire kingdom and kill everybody, or B, you can buy my kingdom for 10 billion berries. So what's it gonna be, old nigga? Genocide or run your pockets? So obviously the king had no choice. He had to run his pockets, but he ain't have enough money. So for the sake of the kingdom, he had to send out his soldiers and beg the people for money. And obviously the people are confused. They like, fucking Riku, we just paid our taxes a month ago. Yeah, man, this is some bullshit. I can't even pay my child support. I just got pregnant the other day. How am I supposed to take care of my child? So King Riku had to get on the big screen get on all fours and said please we're broke i know it's shit y'all just pay taxes but fuck we need this goddamn money so the people said you know what something must be wrong our glorious king needs help so every single citizen they had emptied every dime they had because they trusted their king because he ain't ever done them wrong so everything seems to be fine they paid off doflamingo and they should be scot-free right psych in the distance, you see this man, King Riku, coming at them on a horse. So obviously the soldiers think, ah, King Riku, we got the money. You didn't have to come all the way out here. But this man, King Riku is crying and saying, run away. I beg your pardon. And the king <laughs> starts slaying people and blowing shit up. And you already know what's going on. In the shadows, Doflamingo is controlling this man and making him kill his people. So Dofi didn't tell the king, but there was a option C, and that was to do both genocide and run your pockets. And the king wasn't the only one getting control. Dofi decided to control the soldiers as well and made them slaughter everybody. And they didn't spare nobody. Look at this. This is a mama and her son. And this nigga said, pay your taxes. Look at this poor couple. This brother just got done baking at the bakery with all this cake. Just for this man King Riku to come and blow birthday backs out. And this went on for the whole night. Now here's the part that's gonna make you sick. Doflamingo and his crew are just up here watching this. And when the time was right, he said, all right, boys, it's showtime. These niggas hop down and knock out these soldiers, getting everybody's attention. And Doflamingo says, greetings, everyone. My name is Don Quixote Doflamingo, and I've come to save you. Man, this is some bullshit. Boo this man. <laughs> Now this is a straight homelander ass move. Bro made the king and his guards kill their own people just to come in and save the day. And this was the tragic part. He controlled the king and said, come on over. Make sure you look good for the camera. So bro jumps down and smacks the shit out this nigga on live TV in front of everybody. And just off of that, this man just committed the greatest PR stunt of all time. Cause the people are like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, hell yeah, brother! And they chanted this man's name throughout the night while hoisting the king's body in the air like a trophy. And that night, Doflamingo usurped the throne and became the king of Dressrosa. Now, after Doflamingo became king, he started to do some even more evil shit. 
For an example, using sugar to turn damn near half the population into toys and making their families forget about them, force these tontada low niggas to basically be slaves and work in his drug lab, had some of the old soldiers become gladiators and force them to basically kill each other. And apparently he did something with Viola. I don't even know if this is true, but a lot of people say it is. So uh, I'm just leave this here. Freaky ass nigga, he a 69 God. Freaky ass nigga, he a 69 God. Hey, 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 run for your life. Hey, 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 it's hey, run for your life. Rapper. Black men, genocide. Let me hear you say O V Ho. Say O V Ho. Exhibit B. This step this way. This step that way. This step this way. Exhibit E. The heavenly demon. We now set our sights on an island called Green Bit, just off the coast of Dress Rosa, and we are observing a trade. Well, what was supposed to be a trade between Law and Doflamingo. Now, Law took Caesar as hostage after Punk Hazard to get some leverage on Doflamingo and make him leave the Warlords, so he would lose his Navy immunity. And also, Dofi needs Caesar to make some more of his smile product. But tragically for Law, this plan failed miserably because Doflamingo was two steps ahead. Because this man used his celestial dragon leverage on the government and falsified a whole story about how he left the Warlords when in reality he didn't. And he had this man Law shook. He ain't know what the fuck to do. His whole plan blew up in his face. So Law was like, ah, shit. Well, I'm just gonna So this man Law got the running while Doflamingo was hawking his ass down. And it didn't help that Fuji Pora's ass was here trying to drop meteors on the nigga. And this man Law was fighting for his life in this jungle. Look at Dofi come behind him. Nigga finger sniped him. Brought this man Law to his knees. Then he came down and told him, I got that. You ain't going nowhere, little nigga. I've been waiting to kill your ass for 13 motherfucking years. And look at Dofi, bro. This nigga think he's Spider Man. Out here just webbing shit up and throwing it at him. And I don't even know how long this game of tag lasted for because we know how that dress Rosa pacing was. Good God. But anyways, bro, they ended up getting to the beach. And while Duffy's chasing Law, he ends up hearing a loud ass scream. And it was from the Sunny, from Chopper, Nami, and Brooke being loud as shit. And Duffy just looked over there with a big old smile on his face, like, oh, Law, you done fucked up now. So this man flew over to the ship, hosted up on him, and Duffy was ready to make the Sunny the Titanic. But out of nowhere, here comes Final Form Sip Sanchi out here yelling at this man, like, stay away from my Nami Swan. Like, dog, come on, she not gonna let you hit. But, anyways, Duffy did not take this fight seriously at all. Look at him, he got this big ass grin on his face. Then this man threw out his attack, backflip for style points, and told him, Well, hello there, buddy. Let's not burn the coach. This shit costs more than your life. Ah! Bro, had this man Sanji cooked in one hit. But Sanji started thinking to himself while he was free falling. Oh, if I beat Doflamingo, Nami Swan might let me hit. Yeah, ah! So this man Sanji got a second win and started trying to kick the life out of this man. But Dofi just put out his hand and said, time out. Bro had this man Sanji just stuck in the air. And bro just looked at him and told him, the fuck I just told you about fucking up my coat. I already told your ass this shit costs more than your life. So this man charged up his overheat and he was ready to kill Sanji. But right when Dofi was about to hit him, here come Law with the boom. And he ended up teleporting Dofi away from Sanji. And you could tell this man Dofi had the intent to kill this man. Because he had to throw the attack out and it landed all the way back in Dress Rosa and just cut a building in half. Yeah, buddy, that's attempted murder. You tried to put this sip six feet under so this man law had to take this miniature big back big mom as a hostage so the straw hats could escape but later on they end up having a standoff on this bridge and i kid y'all not this was not a fight this was a sheep coming to the slaughter i mean look at this man law he running for his life again a couple of amigos just cutting the bridge in half and yelling at him like what's wrong pussy i thought you was gonna spin back the cora but you still a bitch but law at least tried something he tried to throw all the debris at him but dofi just cut it to pieces then law tries to come behind him but dofi hits a perfect parry dodges the attack then shatters this man jaw with his foot and the beating just got worse from here this was like a parent whooping their kids ass for being disobedient as hell i mean look at this he came down and kicked the shit out of him again then just started spamming bullet strings at him even took out his legs bro was literally rolling around and screaming in pain and this wasn't even the worst part though flamingo walked up to him lifted up his hand and he slapped God this damn. across dress rosa and oh god, this was probably this man's most savage moment in the whole series. Law is already cooked, but Doflamingo decided, remember when you had lead poisoning, Law? Let's see if you remember how that felt. And he started dumping bullets of lead in him. And look at this freaky ass nigga out here licking the blood. Hell no. And Law was done. He should have been dead. The amount of plot armor Law had in this arc is fucking ridiculous, because this is not the first time bro should have died, as we will see later. So now we fast forward a fat minute, all the way till Sugar got knocked out and all the toys turned into people again, and the whole population turns on Doflamingo because they realize, wait a minute, this nigga's an asshole. He turned half the population into toys, brainwashed us, and committed a coup d'etat. Get this nigga out of here. So then the one-legged demon Kiros came in and cut off this man's head. And everybody's in shock. Everybody like, oh my god, Dofi just died to a side character? Psych! Niggas thought it was gonna be that easy. Yeah, this man could use string clone jutsu. So he got behind Kiros and kicked the roof off of the palace. Good God, this man got some strong ass legs with them fucking leg hands he got. So then here come Luffy trying to be a hero, even though he's a terrorist. Out here trying to hit that man with that Jet Gatlin. But the clone came behind him, 
Well, Lewis back out. Then Dopey looked at him, cocked it back his fist, and told him, Get the fuck off my property, broke ass nigga! Hit Luffy so hard, probably made him even more stupid in the head. So he made Pika throw everybody off the cliff. And at this point, it was over for everybody in Dress Rosa. This man set up the birdcage, got on the big screen, and said, People of Dress Rosa, I'm just gonna go ahead and let y'all know this now. I have fucking hated all you stinky ass peasants ever since I came to this fucking island. So now all you broke ass niggas, get go fuck yourselves. So let's play a game. If you kill any of these bitch ass niggas on this board, especially that long nosed Pinocchio nappy headed ass fuck, I will make you rich. What do you say fuck me for? Oh, and you also have 24 hours before I destroy this fucking island. So this man, Dofi, sent the island into chaos. This man started another genocide just because he got pissed off. So now it was finally time for the Malice at the Palace One Piece edition. Law and Luffy versus Doflamingo. Oh, I forgot. And Bellamy's here. Bruh. Bro was emotionally abusing this man the entire arc. We all know that Bellamy's this man's biggest glazer. So Dofi decided to use this man as a puppet. Look at Luffy. Don't try to kick him. And Dofi just used Bellamy's face as a human shield. He was straight up abusing this nigga. Then look at him. He put bro on some strings and said, dance, nigga. Go fuck up that walking condom for me. Milan and Luffy was just mad at Dofi for just watching him in that chair. So they hit that man with that Red Hawk team up and Luffy really punched the shit out this man. This is the first time you see bro actually hurt. Bro mad as hell thinking in his head like, motherfucker, on you know what just didn't get hit by this nigga in the broke ass sandals. So that man Dofi said, hell nah, you ain't getting away with that one, buddy. So bro started spamming them bullet strings at Luffy, sent his stupid ass flying again. Then he decided to stab the shit out of law. Bro said, sit your bitch ass down before I beat the shit out you again, boy. Then he hit this man Luffy with a nasty combo. Bro launched him in the air, grabbed him with his strings, then yanked him all the way back to Bellamy who he was controlling and sliced them. Oh my goodness. These boys was really getting cooked by a man with a flamingo coat and some short ass capris. So Dofi kicked Luffy's face in again, separating him and Law and making Luffy fight Bellamy. And my God, Law, this man took probably the worst beating in the series right here. Just look at this. Dofi ended up grabbing Law, then makes them both somersaults, crashing into the ground and amputated this nigga Law's arm. Another case where Law should be dead in this arc. But this next part is really when Law should have been fucking dead. Dofi walks up to him, puts the gun up to him, and tells him, die like the broke ass nigga you are. Then just started shooting this man over and over and over and over again. He shot so many bullets in him, he kept on pulling the trigger thinking he had some more. And again, this is another instance of where Law should have died in this arc. Nigga cheated death three times just for him to get up and hit Dofi with a gambling knife. Run. And Law really thought he was him right here. He was talking crazy to Doflamingo and saying, yeah, this is my get back for Korra, nigga. So he hits Doki with a counter shot, basically with all the power he has left. And Law think he done killed him. But no, this man rose from the dead like the Undertaker. And you want to know how this man survived that attack? He stitched his organs together with his string. Nigga gave himself surgery mid-fight. So Doflamingo is standing over Law, about to smash this man's head in and get a fatality. But Hold here it. come Luffy, bailing out Law. Nigga, how many times is Law going to get bailed out this fucking arc? Like, dog, you should be dead. This nigga Law got to be a cat or some shit, because he got to have like nine lives or something. So here comes that Nika Luffy himself. Bro kicked off them dusty, busted, broke-ass sandals and transformed into this fat-ass balloon. So obviously when Doflamingo I saw Gear Force, he was laughing his ass off. Blood was like, what the fuck is this? Am I supposed to be scared of you, nigga? You turned into a balloon. But Luffy was done playing games. He punched the living shit out of Dofi. This man flew all the way down to the streets. And I ain't gonna lie, Dofi started getting dog walked. This man ain't felt so much pain since he was getting beat as a child. But this man, Doflamingo, went to his last resort. He said, fuck it. I'm already destroying the country, so I might as well turn everything into string. So he ends up using his awakening and just throwing buildings of just string at him. But Luffy still did not care. He flew over to this man and hit him with that Leo Bazooka. And Dofi went to flying and just pinned in the mountain. Damn. This fight should have been over right here. But nope, the plot kicked in. Because Luffy ran out of time on Gear Force. The man literally deflated right before he was about to finish him. And this gave Dofi enough time to recover. And this man was more pissed off than ever. He went on a rampage looking for this man Luffy. Bro started killing everybody. It got to the point where if you got in this man's way, you die. Then he started moving the birdcage in closer. He was about to wipe the whole island off the map. So then here come Viola trying to do something against this 69 god. And I'm not even gonna waste no time on this. Y'all already know what happened. She got beat the fuck up. I don't even know why she tried this. Like shorty, no. You out here getting your head smashed in. And then look at this, bro. He started hanging her by the string. Oh no, nigga. My nigga, this is harassment. Nah, buddy, you're done. You're done after this. We know you did it. The allegations had to be true, especially after this scene. You was not like us, buddy. This image is staying exactly like it is. And then you tried to make Rebecca kill her dog. Nah, this man don't me goes pure evil. This man is a sick ass nigga. So thank God Luffy finally came over and he said, hell nah, yo ass is going to jail. So he charged up that King Kong gun and yelled at that nigga, take your freaky ass to impel down and blasted this man Dofi to the earth's crust. And it was over. Anime Diddy was finally defeated.
So after this, they lock this man up in the depths of Impel Down, and this man should never get out again. But let's be honest with ourselves, sometime sooner or later, this nigga's getting out. Somebody gonna make the call to Jayoma. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. With all these damn charges, this is why this man is on this round table. There should be no discussion. This is one sick ass nigga. So yeah, uh, the faded Do Flamingo video. <laughs> we finally did it. Now y'all know damn well what might happen to this. So uh, hey, fingers crossed. Uh, like the video for good luck, I guess. Hey, and hopefully we make it through. But anyways, man, hope y'all enjoy. And until then, I'm out this house. Alrighty, man. That's just gonna about do it for this one, man. Hey, yo, Do Flamingo is. Dangerous dog. God damn. God damn. But you know that plot armor had to kick in eventually. I that that's why I really don't watch a lot of animes and I gotta keep it real. Reason I don't watch a lot of animes, plot armor. I hate how the villain is so fucking OP and then plot armor comes in and just destroys that. You know what I'm saying? So I that's just me though. That's just me personally, man. That's just me personally though. But anyway, so that's just gonna about do it for this one, man. I will see you all in the next video. Till then, peace out.